Creating your dream landscape often requires a bit of a financial investment. So in this video, I wanna cover nine really common mistakes that I see home gardeners make when they're DIYing their landscape. And I'm also gonna give you a lot of really practical solutions to not make these mistakes and what you should do instead. So let's get right into it. My name is Amy and over at Pretty Purple Door, I help home gardeners design landscapes that are uniquely you. Number nine is a lack of planning. And this is the most common mistake I see with home gardeners. And let's be honest, without actually writing some things down, trying to draw up a plan, or really just get a vision for what you want in your space, you're gonna end up spending extra money here and there where you wouldn't otherwise have to. So I always recommend looking at some inspiration photos, trying to find that style that you're really going for, and then making a plan. A plan will also allow you to sort of make a better budget for your land so you can decide exactly what you want and then break that plan down into different phases that you can accomplish over the course of a few weeks, a few months, or even a few years. So if you find inspiration photos and write down a plan and start drawing out exactly what you want, you're going to end up saving a lot of money in the long run. Mistake number eight is not considering hiring a professional or at least studying landscape design. Professional landscape designers can be super helpful. So definitely consider calling someone and just seeing the pricing. You may be surprised. If you're not comfortable talking with a landscape professional, the next best thing is to study landscape design. Landscape design is actually a degree that people get in college. So I think it's easy as a homeowner to just assume that you can just put some plants in here and there and make it look really nice. But there's actually a lot of design principles and things that you can learn if you start studying online. For example, this YouTube channel, uh, my website, I have online courses, I have ebooks, I have all different products that will guide you through different steps of your landscape design journey. Consulting with a pro or at least learning some of the design principles and things that go into a professional landscape design is really going to save you a lot of money and possibly help you to catch things that you wouldn't otherwise think about if you just went into it blind and started planting. Number seven is another big one, and that's DIYing above your skill level. So there's certain projects that you can probably do at home, and then there's others that you may take on and then realize later that you've made a mistake and you actually need a professional to come in and fix or clean up what you've done. Ask me how I know I have been here, I have made this mistake, and I've had 20 random DIY projects that I just never finished and then never felt like I could actually hire someone to come in and clean up the mess that I made. So I definitely consider hiring a professional for certain parts of the projects. Things like hardscaping and walkways come to mind. Call some professionals, get three different quotes from contractors and just see what that cost is. You may be surprised that a lot of the things that you're considering DIYing, when you add up all the time and energy that you're gonna put into the project plus the materials, it may actually be a lot simpler for somebody to just come in and get that done for you so that you can get to the parts that are more fun and enjoyable for your gardening experience. I love to DIY projects and I'm not discouraging anyone from trying that. It's just to sort of like know your skill level and your limits with DIYing and make sure that you're not making that mistake of taking on too much and then ending up with a landscape that just never gets finished. Number six is selecting the wrong plants for your landscape. And this is definitely one that can add up cost-wise over time when you're picking plants and then they're not growing or they're dying or they don't look great and then you have to keep replacing those plants. So definitely do some research before you head to the garden center and make sure you're thinking about things like the amount of sun that the area gets, the type of soil that you have, the type of exposure for that location. And just make sure that you're picking plants that will suit the conditions that you have. I have an entire article on my website website about flower gardening 101 and the things you should think about. So you should definitely check out that article or the video that goes along with it. It is a big mistake to just go to the garden center, pick out some pretty plants and put them wherever. Uh, odds are you're not going to right off the bat pick the right plants for the conditions unless you are aware of what conditions you have first. Mistake number five is not actually caring for the plants that you do plant. And this goes hand in hand with the last mistake where you're looking for plants that will suit the conditions you have. Now that you have those plants, they are living things and you do have to take care of them, especially in the beginning when they're first planted, they're going to need supplementary water and sometimes protection from the elements. So it's really important to take care of those plants that you do have and protect that investment that you've made. Plants are alive, they don't have feet, so they can't really move around in your landscape. So if you put them in a position where they're too hot or you don't give them enough water or it's 
too sunny or something like that. They can't just get up and like walk away. <laughs> I wish that they could, but it's up to you as the gardener. And that's part of the fun of gardening. And while you can really reduce the amount of maintenance that you have to do when you put the right plant in the right place, there still are times and situations where you will have to take care of them. So just make sure that you're tending to your plants and that's going to save you a lot of money in the long run and a lot of headaches too. If you're liking this mistake list and the tips that go along with it, you're gonna love my three gardening secrets training. And this is where I go over in great detail the top three mistakes that I see home gardeners make and the solutions to those problems so that you can have your dream landscape. Money wasting mistake number four is buying plants from the sale rack without a plan. And this might be a little bit controversial, but I really do think that just because a plant is on sale doesn't mean it belongs in your garden. And if you keep buying from the sale rack, you're just gonna end up with a landscape that's looking cluttered and messy and it doesn't really flow together. And that's gonna end up costing you money because you're gonna be tearing those plants out and replanting. I love me a good deal. I love the sale rack, but what I would recommend first is to learn a little bit and uncover your garden style, uh, have a color scheme in mind. And then when you go to the garden center, you'll be more prepared to choose plants that will fit within your style, within your colors and within the conditions that you have. So definitely don't make that mistake of just grabbing every plant on the sale rack. And then you end up with a big old mess of plants that don't really go together and don't look like that dream getaway that you've been wanting. The number three mistake that can cost you a lot of money is a lack of preparation. And specifically here, I'm talking mostly about soil. So if you have healthy soil, you're going to likely have healthier plants. So if you're putting a plant that's alive into soil that really isn't suited for that plant, you're going to end up with plants again that are going to fail or die or struggle or going to cost you more money in fertilizing and adding amendments later. So I always recommend getting a soil test. You can send your soil out to your local extension office to get them to test it. There's also at-home soil kits and there's other ways to do it with mason jars. At the very least, dig down a little bit and grab a handful of your soil and just squeeze it in your hand. And this is going to tell you quite a bit about your soil just in general. If it's really sticky and clumpy, that means it's clay soil. That means that it's heavier, it doesn't drain well, but typically has a pretty good amount of nutrients. If it's just in the middle, it's probably a loam and it's a good soil soil to start with. And you might also have a sandy soil, which just feels like sand and it's really loose and gritty. And that means that everything is going to drain really well. So certain plants really like good drainage and certain other plants can stand wet feet. So again, this is going to give you indications as to what types of plants you need to plant. Otherwise, you can always work on amending your soil. And the thing that I'd recommend is just using some compost and slowly working compost in the soil every year. And that's going to improve the conditions of your soil and make your plants a lot happier so that they grow and thrive and you don't have to keep replacing them. Another mistake that can cost you quite a bit of money is falling for different gimmicks and trends in the landscape design world. Just like interior design, landscape design does have trends and different things. And while they're really fun to try, you wanna protect your investment. So just like if you were doing a kitchen, you wanna go for materials and things that will last, that are timeless, that are classic. Then you can add in these other trends and things with smaller items like maybe planter pots or a set of curtains or things like that. But hardscaping and the things that you're gonna be spending a lot of money on protect that investment and make sure that you're keeping it timeless so that you're not reducing your property value so that it will not look dated over time and then work the trends in in smaller ways and that'll save you a lot of money in the long run and the final mistake on this list is overspending on tools and other products. And I am certainly guilty of this one, and I'm sure many of you who are watching also are, but there are so many really cool and fun products for gardening, but I find that the majority of them really just aren't necessary. I can get most of my gardening tasks done with just some simple tools like a hose, a garden cart, a trowel, a spade, and some clippers or pruners. So those are really like my staple products, and I'll leave a link in the description to all of the products that I recommend. But in general, I find that when you're new to gardening, you have a new hobby, it's exciting, and you may want to over purchase these products. But in the beginning, I recommend just getting some cheaper supplies. And then as you start to use them and realize what products are really your go to's. And then from there, then you can buy those more expensive tools with the better warranties.
So those are my nine best money saving tips, but if you have others, I'd love to hear them. So leave those in the comments below and I'm gonna be sharing a lot more mistakes slash tip videos in the future. So I'll put the next one right here and I hope you watch it. I'll see you over in that video.